Hi, my name is Jason Mears. I'm a senior systems engineer and a CTO ambassador working from the UK. And I'm going to take you through the VMware STDC playing cards. So the um, STDC playing cards or software defined data center cards are a simple tool for helping you to learn the various uh, products in the VMware stack and our various um, strategic initiatives and, and, and tiers that things fall under. So this is what the SDDC, SDDC playing cards look like. There's an SDDC pack here, and there's also a cloud management pack and a set of instructions which tell you how to use them. But this video is basically gonna run through all those instructions and show you how to lay them out and tell you a little bit about what each card represents. So once we've laid these cards out, Conceptually, this is what we'll end up with. We'll end up with the strategic priorities at the top across all the ACES, and then under each category like data center, cloud, workspace, and network and security, we'll then break it into smaller categories, and we're going to pick four products or services or points of interest out of each of the uh, the, the sub-categories, just to give you an insight into them. But we're also going to cover things like the human services uh, delivered by people rather than the software delivered across the top. So things like accelerating advisory services, operational transformation services, uh, professional services, i.e. delivery, and then our different support options. So this is how it looks conceptually when we lay them out. And I'll run through in turn now uh, and just give you an idea about how to use the cards. So once the cards are finished, this is an example laid out on a table, it will look something like this. And again, you'll see we'll have the four main categories across the top. And then we'll break it into smaller subcategories like the SDDC platform, data center and cloud, storage and availability, which all fall under modernize the data center. And then in the integrate public clouds, we've got cloud management and cloud services. Empower the digital workspace is about workspace, application delivery, and then things like enterprise mobility and mobile device management. And then transforming network and security will be about the security tools and capabilities. So it doesn't map out exactly um, that the reason I say, I say that is there are some things like NSX in our network and security category where you could argue that network and security actually works across all of these because we can use NSX to secure the data center, the cloud and the workspace. But if I could only put NSX in one particular category, I'd put it in this networking and security part of it there. So that's what the deck will look like when we're finished. And I'm now going to run through and just show you how, how you lay the cards out. If you have a pack of cards with you now, it's probably worth making some space and doing this along with me as I'm, as I'm running through this. So, as I said before, we're going to start at the very top and we're going to put down the ACE for modernize the data center. That's going to be our first strategic priority across the top. Uh, the next one, again, is integrate public clouds. And then we've got empower the digital workspace and we've got transforming networking and security. So we've got our top tier strategic categories. What we're now going to do is start laying out the cards in the subcategories or sub product categories. Uh, and we'll just work through them. And I'll give you a very simple explanation of each one as we go through it. So the first category I'm going to go through is the software defined data center platform or SDDC platform. A core component of that is software defined networking. So this tends to be a, a a reference to the product that we call NSX but inside the SDDC platform we have we have this idea of a simple Lego Lego building block or a simple uh, block that you can put on your own infrastructure or a cloud provider to build this SDDC platform and software defined networking is a key part of that what we're then going to do is we're going to put the next card just slightly above that but leaving gaps so you can still read what it says there it still says software defined networking so my next card, as you can see, I've put it on top, but I've left that description down there. So I'm going to build this stack all the way up to the top. So the next one is software defined storage. And again, to relate that back to a VMware product, that would be our vSAN or virtual SAN product. Again, another key component of a software defined data center. And then the last part of that is software defined compute, the bit that takes CPU or processor and then memory or RAM and then makes that available from a big pool to run virtual machines on. So again, that's the product that we refer to as vSphere. So software defined compute, which we've got there, software defined storage and software defined networking is part of our SDDC platform or SDDC stack. And the simplest way to buy that is through a product or a bundle called VMware Cloud Foundation or VCF. 
So this is probably the technology you'll talk to customers about most because this is our strategic bet for moving from data centers to hybrid cloud to, pull, to full public cloud. So that's our first column or first stack, it's STDC platform. And I've picked out four things that are probably worth you finding a little bit more about as you uh, embark your journey in VMware. The next one I'm gonna pick is the data center and cloud tool specifically. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Update Manager. Uh, this used to be a separate appliance, but it's now integrated into our vCenter server. And as the name suggests, it manages updates across VMware products uh, and applications. So that's one of the common things that you'll find in the data center and cloud stack. One of the next things that I'm gonna show you is vSphere with operations management. So this is traditional vSphere compute, um, which is CPU um, and processor or memory and RAM. Uh, but we've also got a little bit of operations management on here. So a, a tool that's able to analyze and, and analyze the environment and look for problems, something that looks after health, risk and efficiency. The reason I'm showing this here is that there is an option to buy just this operations management component with vSphere. It is a smaller subset of a much bigger suite called vRealize suite, but some customers who don't buy the whole suite will buy this product called vSphere with operations management or vSum. So I just need to call it out in this part here. The next bit is obviously vSphere itself, the hypervisor which we've had now for 15 to 20 years. This is the product that almost every single one of our customers will have and will know from the last 15, 20 years. Following on from that, the thing that manages all our VMware vSphere servers or ESXi servers is VMware vCenter server itself. So this is the, the single management plane or, or control center for all our VMware and vCenter servers. And what you'll probably find is that there are still lots of our customers that only know about this particular software stack or only have this particular software stack. And our job is to educate them on the full SDDC platform and then all the other tools and products that we have as we'll build out over the rest of this session. But you will find there'll be lots of customers that have had this particular software stack for 10, 15, maybe 20 years. And some of them don't know about the other things that we do or just have, or haven't got those extra capabilities. So our job really is to move people from just buying this software stack into all the other products and services that we do. And you may hear internally people talk about act one behavior and a complete oversimplification, but act one is us going out and selling as much of these products as we can to customers. An act two mentality or act two behavior is about us moving up the software stack and providing cloud technology, workspace technology and network and security and trying to sell the whole raft of products that are going to appear down here. So that's the data center and cloud. The other new addition is storage and availability. So we have a product called vSAN or VMware SAN and an easy way to buy that is something called a vSAN ready node. So most tier one manufacturers, people like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Cisco, all those usual brands, quite often will supply a piece of hardware that's certified for vSAN and comes with the vSAN software. So what you're now buying is an appliance rather than individual components. And the, the name that we use for those are vSAN ready nodes as a, as a common across all vendors. There are some vendors, uh, an example would be Dell with VxRail, who take a vSAN ready node, provide additional software and functions and features on top and kind of improve the product or create a premium version of a vSAN ready node. An example of that would be something called a, a Dell VxRail or VxRail appliance. But essentially the bottom, you know, the common denominator is a vSAN ready node and some manufacturers further enhance them with their own specific uh, product names or brands. But that's just an easy way to buy hardware with vSphere and vSAN. The next thing that I'm going to add into the storage and availability category is vSphere replication. It's a product that some of our customers are not even aware that we, they have access to. It's a software-based um, software replication technology. The advantage of that is any storage that VMware and vSphere can see can be replicated to any other part of or piece of storage that VMware and vSphere can see. So it could be an array built by one vendor, so something like a, a NetApp maybe at one site, and it could be something like an EMC uh, array at the other site, or it could be something like a, a, a Dell array or something else. It could even just be simple hard drives. It doesn't even have to be an enterprise storage array. But we've got this ability to replicate data and virtual machines 
from one place to another, regardless of the actual underlying storage type underneath. Now, one of the things that that replication technology is particularly good for is things like disaster recovery. And we have a product, a specific product called VMware Site Recovery Manager, and that manages things like replication of data and virtual machines between sites. It also has a concept of a run book, which is a list of which servers are more important than others, and of those important servers, which order they need to be brought up in, in order for the, for the network or for the business to function properly. Because some things have to be brought up before others, and Site Recovery Manager has that intelligence built in, in something called a run book, to know which things to bring up in which order. Because different networks or different data centers or different sites may have different networks and different network settings, Site Recovery Manager can also change the network settings on a virtual machine to make sure that it powers up correctly and works correctly, even if it's not in the original data center or the original country or original location. So again, Site Recovery Manager is one of our tools that automates the recovery of a data center or a site by using intelligent software and runbooks. Again, part of storage and availability. And the piece we were talking about from the start, that the under, underlying piece of technology which, which runs a lot of this stuff is vSAN or virtual SAN. It's a piece of software embedded into the vSphere hypervisor, unlocked by a license key or a serial number. And what it allows you to do is um, install hard drives and flash drives or SSD drives in the server. And when you give those hard drives and flash drives to VMware or vSphere, it turns that into the equivalent of an enterprise grade SAN or storage array. So it's a way of getting enterprise storage features in commodity hardware, but also it's less to manage. It's, you're managing the storage and the hypervisor from the same place, the, um, the VMware vCenter server that we talked about before. So it's the same people with the same tools, not necessarily a dedicated storage team and network team and um, virtu virtualization team. So that's that's the three parts of the modernized data center. It's the software defined data center platform or SDDC platform, the data center and cloud tools and the storage and availability tools. And all of that I'm grouping in this modi modernize the data center directive. We'll now move on to uh, the cloud based technologies. So under cloud management, we have a, a suite of products called vRealize Suite. That's made up of four individual products. The first of which is vRealize Login Site. And vRealize Login Site is a correlation tool. It takes logs from lots of different applications, services, pieces of hardware, parts of your environment, and it correlates them together. And I tend to think of this as being a, a, um, a root cause analysis tool where you can wind back the clock to just before a, 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 an outage or an event happened and see what just changed. Um, so I, I think of it as a post-mortem tool. When things have gone wrong, it allows you to see what happened on your environment just before something went wrong. Um, I've even heard customers describe it as being like um, catch-up TV or you know, kind of the, the kind of thing you get with some cable providers where you can rewind the program you are watching, go back a bit, watch it again, and then skip forward again. So it's, a, it's something that allows you to move backwards and forwards in time through the logs to see what just changed before something went wrong. So again, a log correlation tool that works with all of our tools and components, as well as third party tools and components and other hardware appliances. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is vRealize Operations. This is the tool that I talked about in vSphere with Operations Management. vSphere plus vRealize Operations is vSphere with Operations Management, but it's also part of the vRealize suite. And this is the tool that talks to all your um, hardware and infrastructure and looks at things like health and risk and efficiency. So it works beautifully with all the VMware tools, applications and services, but it also works with third party applications. It also works with third party hardware, network equipment, firewalls, load balancers, storage arrays, all those kinds of things as well. So this is your uh, central source of truth or view of the world as to how your environment is performing right now if there are any risks or issues coming up in future, and then things like um, efficiency and waste if you want to optimize your data centers. So that's vRealize Operations, used to be called um, vCops rather than vROPS, so some people might know that as vCops. Next tool I'm gonna to talk about is vRealize Automation. So automation allows you to perform a task or a process 
build a virtual machine or groups of virtual machines or set up software in an automated fashion rather than an individual clicking through tasks manually um, in, a, in a way that's prone to errors or prone to differences and non-standardization if different people perform the same task by hand. So essentially what Vrealize Automation does is take a task that an engineer might perform or an administrator might perform and we turn it into something called a blueprint. And a blueprint is a design or a description of how a service or application or part of infrastructure should be built. And once you've got that blueprint, anybody who clicks on the blueprint or runs the blueprint will run or create or build that environment in exactly the same way every single time because they followed a blueprint that did it automatically rather than done it by hand. So again, automation, it's one of those things where it takes a little bit of time to set up, but when you get to the sixth or seventh time of doing something, automation actually speeds things up and it gives you standardization as well, where it doesn't matter which engineer or which administrator built something, you know that everything is going to be consistent. The other thing that automation gives you is an ability to have a service catalog or almost like a vending machine where users can see what applications and services or functionality the IT department can offer them and they can look at it on a web page or a portal or as I said you know something that's equivalent to like a vending machine where you can see everything on offer you can even press a button and see how much it costs to build that kind of thing how much you'll be charged or what approval you would need to build it so automation is a key part of this cloud management suite or cloud management platform the next thing that we've got is vRealize Business. Now, this is a tool that can compare the cost of running a virtual machine or an application or a service in your current data center, maybe in your second data center, but it'll even allow you to compare the cost if you were to move that into a cloud provider. So if I was to take that application or service and move it into Amazon Web Services this afternoon, what would it cost me? Or if I was to try and build that in Azure or Google Cloud Platform, or another data center, what would be the cost? And it'll allow me to compare the costs of various parts of my environment. So not only can you compare the costs, but you can make an intelligent decision about where to place something or where to build something ahead of time. So if you know what you're going to build, you can plug those details into Vrealize Business and it will give you equivalent costs across all of those platforms. So that was uh, Vrealize Suite, which is part of the cloud management platform. The, the important part about all those tools in there, Vrealize Business, Vrealize Automation, Vrealize Operations, and Vrealize Login Site is, they are all installed by the customer and run on the customer's own equipment. The next set of tools I'm going to show you are cloud services. So these are tools and applications and services installed via VMware in a VMware cloud environment, and it's consumed as software as a service. So lots of these services are equivalent to the other ones um, in Be Realize Suite, and I'll talk about some of them shortly, but it's a hosted version or a software as a, as a service version. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Discovery. This literally just goes and finds all the virtual machines, applications, and services that you've got, whether that be in your own data center or other cloud providers. And once we've got a list of our whole environment, no matter where it's built, we can then run some of the other tools or the other cloud services. So Cost Insight is the hosted version or the software as a service version of Vrealize Business. Vrealize Business tells you how much your environment is cost. You can compare them across data centers and clouds, and it's run on your own equipment and installed by you. Cost Insight does exactly the same. It allows you to compare the costs of your data centers and cloud providers, but it's purchased as a subscription and it's a service. Next thing I'll talk about is Wavefront, which is a, a monitoring and analytics tool. So it's similar to vRealize Operations, the tool we have here, but aimed at a slightly different kind of application or developer mindset. But essentially, it's a monitoring tool. Again, that's a hosted service that you pay for on a subscription basis. And then we've also got things like our VMware Cloud Provider Program, which is VMware Cloud Providers who run the same software-defined data center as our customers do on their uh, own environment or their own data centers, but they run it as a cloud service. So essentially, you're still getting all the, um, the same types of vSphere, NSX, vSAN, all those uh, capabilities and software components, but you're buying it as a hosted service from a cloud provider, 
um, rather than paying for the data center, the servers, the power and the cooling and all those other associated costs instead. So the service you get is exactly the same. It's just that you're renting it from a cloud provider or paying a subscription to a cloud provider rather than building it on your own services. And actually, because it's the same software, it's possible to move things between your own data center and a cloud provider because it's this same software stack running on both sides usually with some magic from NSX to make the networking part work beautifully between them. So that was our public cloud offering. That was the uh, vRealize suite and our cloud services. Now, building a data center is fine and having cloud uh, providers is fine, but unless you actually get applications and services to end users, you're not providing much benefit. So this next part to it is about our workspace tools, our digital workspace tools around running um, remote desktops and application publishing, mobile device management to things like smartphones and tablets. So this next stack we're going to look at is digital workspace. And one of the key software components in the VMware digital workspace is an identity manager, a central source of identity management that can talk to lots of other directories, maybe something like Active Directory or another type of directory, but you can have several sources of usernames and passwords uh, that can all be managed by a single identity manager and the advantage of that identity manager is it allows you to log on once as an individual and then we can do things like single sign-on. So that means that I can log on to Workspace ONE or to, I can log off to Identity Manager in the morning and that no matter which tool I use, whether that be another piece of software, maybe it's access to a website or other applications and services, single sign-on is able to either pass through or enter my usernames and passwords for me so I don't need to constantly log on to applications and services throughout the day or more importantly I don't need to remember lots of different usernames and passwords for lots of different applications that I might want to use. So that's the identity manager and single sign-on. What we also have is Workspace ONE App Express. And Workspace ONE App Express is a smaller subset of the full Workspace ONE um, suite or the full Workspace ONE set of tools. It's just worth pointing out that there are two different ones there because not everybody is aware of the difference between them. But Workspace ONE is the joining together of the two other components that I'll, I'll go through next, along with identity management and single sign-on. So those two other components are publishing of desktops and applications. And the most um, common product we use here is something called uh, VMware Horizon View or the Horizon suite of products. So it's worth pointing out that we recently launched a version of Horizon that not only works with Windows desktops, but also works with Linux desktops. So Linux is a, a, a different operating system that performs much the same functions as, as Windows or Apple Mac, um, but it's just a different type of operating system. So much in the same way that you can buy a petrol car, a diesel car, or a hybrid electric car, although they perform the same service, under the hood, they're built slightly differently. And in the desktop world, we have a similar thing with Windows, with Apple Mac and with Linux. But just to call out that, we now support our, um, Linux desktops as well as Windows desktops. Another thing that we also include in higher end versions of um, Horizon is an environment manager. And what that simply means is my, my preferences, my settings, my files, uh, even things like my desktop background or other things that I'm uh, precious about or have been working on follow, follow me round when I log on on and off of different desktops from different devices. So it keeps the personal element of my desktop plus all my settings and preferences and those kinds of things follow me round no matter which desktop I'm accessing, which applications I'm accessing or which device I'm accessing it from. It's important to call out this because in most end user computing environments or remote access environments, customers will often have to buy a separate product from a different vendor, whereas we include this in the higher end versions of our products. The next thing I want to talk about is Horizon App Volumes. So App Volumes is a technology where we can put um, applications into a user's desktop or mobile device in a very um, slick fast, easy way. So rather than having to have lots of different desktops built that all have different combinations of applications and services and plugins and drivers and those kinds of things, we can, we can have a standard desktop where the applications we need 
are injected into that desktop or placed into that desktop as the user needs them based on the ones that they have rights and permissions to. So if that sounds a little bit complicated, the best way to explain this is to say we can now just have one desktop or one image for a desktop and we can put on top of that whichever applications the user needs at the right time. The alternative to that was to build a separate desktop which was unique and contained every possible combination of every possible application a user might want. So for uh, maybe 100 users, I might need something like 10 or 20 different versions of a desktop because they all use different things. Horizon App Volumes takes away that complexity and makes it very simple to deliver applications and services to end users, whether they be on a desktop, a tablet or a mobile device. It just simplifies the whole process. The other thing that the part that I started with is Horizon View, the core technology that publishes applications and desktops to end users or delivers or streams or gets users to the applications and data that they need. So again, that falls under our um, works, our digital workspace category. The next thing I'm going to talk about is our mobile device management or enterprise device management. So now that we've got a desktop or applications to an end user, we probably want to manage the device that they're accessing those applications and services from. So one of the things I'm going to specifically call out is AirWatch Secure Content Locker, which is a way of securely, securely storing company data or corporate information on a mobile device in a way that we can secure it so we can stop the user from doing things like cutting and pasting or printing or forwarding on information from that secure locker to any other organizations or individuals. Another thing that we have is the Boxer email client which again is a secure email. It allows us to make sure that confidential corporate information can't just be forwarded on to a personal account or to another organization or other individuals. So again, this is a secure way of running email or a secure way of running content. And the advantage of this is if a user loses a device or leaves the organization, we can securely delete emails and content remotely without having to uh, completely wipe the device or have the device to hand. Now that means that if we can just take away the things that we put on just the corporate data, that means that we don't have to worry about wiping a user's own mobile phone or iPad. We are just securing or deleting the content that is um, company content or organizational content. So it provides a way of having bring your own device where company data can be secured, but the user can still have a personal device or still use a personal device. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, EDM or Enterprise Device Management. So managing a device that is fully owned or fully taken over as an enterprise device. The alternative to that is mobile device management rather than enterprise device management. So I guess all we're saying here is there are two different ways of managing mobile devices. One might be as a corporately owned, corporately paid for device where we have full control of everything or it might be a user's own device or bring your own device where it's a mixture of personal information and company information and the way we manage them might be slightly differently. But we support both types, enterprise device management and mobile device management. So that was a, a quick wrap up of our digital workspace part and all the different streams or categories that fall under that. The last one I'm gonna talk about is networking and security. So I'm gonna start with app defense. Now, App Defense is a technology that looks at the behavior of an application or service, and instead of having to run um, signatures or definitions that describe what bad things look like, App Defense takes it the other way around. It says, if I have a, a snapshot of what the application does on a daily basis, I just have to keep monitoring this app and make sure it doesn't do something different or isn't behaving in a different way than it did for the previous month. I've even heard people describe this as being like the way that a parent just knows that a child is ill or is feeling unwell because they know how that child behaves so well that when something changes, it's obvious to them that something is wrong without having to run a series of tests uh, on the child or take temperatures and those kinds of things. You just know that there's something wrong with your child because the behavior has changed. The, the term that the industry uses for this is heuristics or heuristic analysis. 
And what we're basically saying is we don't have to have a list of all the bad things in the world and check if any of those are running. We just need to know what good looks like or what secure looks like and look for changes in that. So App Defense, this product here, works with uh, vSphere product here, and that's the bit that puts some intelligence. It's next generation security on top of existing things like antivirus and uh, malware protection and all, the, all those other things. Uh, we've also got a tool in our networking and security bucket, which is Virialize Network Insight. So this is a tool that looks across your network uh, and your data centers to see what traffic is flowing from which virtual machines to other virtual machines. And it can map out all the conversations going on between all your applications and services. So it can be used as a security tool because it'll highlight if systems are being accessed from places they shouldn't be. But it also tells you what kind of conversations machines have between themselves. Uh, and as an example, you now know which machines talk to each other most frequently and are dependent on each other. So an application server or a web server might do a lot of conversation or have a lot of traffic to a database server. Now that's useful information because if you want to move your web server or your database server to the cloud, you need to bring the other servers or the other applications and services that it depends on with it Otherwise, you might have problems with latency and delay between them. So it's a, it's a way of mapping out uh, which applications and services talk to each other so you can assess which things can be moved to the cloud or moved between data centers or separated if need be. Uh, the other thing it does is it also allows you to build more secure firewall rules. So by using Network Insight, you can see what is the minimum set of services or the minimum set of privileges that I need to grant these two services or applications in order for it to work, but block any other type of access to prevent attacks from viruses or malware or malicious hackers. So again, a very useful tool, works particularly well with um, NSX on our um, network and security tool. So what I'm gonna do next is call out just two key things about NSX. So NSX is one product, but there are two things that stand out particularly when you're having conversations with customers. And one is slightly complicated term, but networking layer two over layer three. So this is what network engineers and techies call it. What it really means is the ability to run virtual machines and applications and services in different buildings, in different data centers, even in different countries or cloud providers, but them all look like they're plugged into the same network or the same room or the same switch. So it's some clever networking technology that gets rid of some of the difficulties in having your environment or your organization spread across different data centers, countries, or cloud providers. So for, for people who work in networking, that technology or that capability is of real interest for them, and they, they're very generally very receptive to that. The other uh, thing that's particularly um, uh, interesting for customers is NSX micro-segmentation. And this is a way of providing a, a software defined firewall around every single virtual machine for security purposes. So we've had firewalls for years and years, but most people have got hardware firewalls. And to try and put a hardware firewall in front of every virtual machine could mean having to buy hundreds of firewalls and hundreds, if not thousands of network cables to do it. So most people have a firewall on the perimeter or the outside of the network or between large portions of the network, but they generally don't have a hardware firewall for every single virtual machine. The, at the other end of the scale, the other way you can do it is to put a firewall in the operating system, so in Windows or Linux itself. The only problem with that is that any virus or malware or somebody trying to attack that virtual machine generally has the ability to turn off the firewall in the operating system from the operating system. So you're relying on not being infected or having a virus in order to protect yourself from having an infection or a virus. So this is a middle ground where the hypervisor or vSphere does the firewall in. So we can automatically attach a firewall to every single virtual machine without needing a physical firewall or an operating system or software firewall, plus all the complexities of managing that. So for things like ransomware attacks, um, for things like viruses and malware, this single thing, NSX micro-segmentation, has become a really hot topic with customers. So that's the end of my uh, four tiers. Again, I'll just go back over them. We've got data center, cloud, workspace, and networking. 
Um, the other things I'd like to talk about are the, the services which are not necessarily software services or things that you install. They're the things that VMware can do with, with people. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is accelerating advisory services. So this is a team of people at VMware who can help a customer to work out what the business should be doing next or what the business should be focusing on or what the business should look like in order to be successful going forward. And the best example I can think of this of a business that didn't think about what being successful meant going forward and a business that did would be the, the fall of Blockbuster Video and the rise of people like Netflix where the strategy um, had to be adapted because the world was changing or the environment was changing. And Accelerate and Advisory Services can help a business to stay relevant or stay cutting edge and, and help them develop the strategy that they need to adopt to stay competitive or relevant going forward. And advisory services, I've picked three things out of here. Uh, the services, you know, just some of the services they offer are evaluation services, diagnostic services, and strategy services. And you will hear at your start training, you will hear from people in advisory services who can explain this to you. The key thing about advisory services is you should probably bring them into customers and opportunities early so that they can help you with the strategy part rather than bring them afterwards as an afterthought. Um, the next uh, people um, service I'm going to talk about is operational transformation services. So operational transformation services take the view that if you install all this new clever technology, but your users don't behave any differently. So an example might be you might have a, a brand new remote access agile working solution, but if people still come to the desks every day and still print out pieces of paper to hand to each other across across the desk or put in somebody's in tray or out tray, you haven't changed. You haven't got any benefit from the new technology. So things like working from mobile devices like tablets and smartphones or laptops um, that are connected to Wi-Fi in coffee shops, they can help you get the best value out of the technology you brought. So the way that OTS would describe it is, some of most of the VMware products and services are about technology and capabilities and those kinds of things. Operational transformation services is about people and process and getting the best from your people and process when you've invested in technology. So three things that I picked from that are the fact that they do transformation workshops, they can do readiness assessments, and they can do operational transformation, that bit where we get the business to behave differently to get the best value out of the stuff that they've just bought or purchased. Next one I'm going to talk about is professional services. So this is where you can get help from VMware to actually uh, design, deploy and do knowledge transfer on our products and services. So various different guises. Uh, there's a thing called a technical account manager who can work with the customer, tends to spend um, a portion of the time working on site with the customer or being an advocate for the customer internally and can handle all VMware uh, questions, queries, escalations, support tickets, all those kinds of things. That's a technical account manager. Uh, we've got consultants and architects, so techies that will actually design and build environments for you. And then things like project managers and program managers, which can help you uh, transition or build a service and, and migrate to a new platform or a new capability. So that's professional services. And then the other thing I want to talk about or add is our GSS global support services because sometimes support can be overlooked. So there are different levels of support. I'm going to highlight three here. One of them is our production support, which is 24 seven support, but it is reactive until a, cu a customer rings us up when they have a problem. Um, another support we have is business critical support, which is proactive. We will actively do things to try and make sure that, that problems, accidents, issues don't happen in the first place. And then the next thing we've got is mission critical support. So this is really preventative. This goes into great detail about design, planned changes, planned operational procedures to make sure that nothing in there is going to take our environment down because something's been missed. So again, lots of different levels of support, but they are the three that I want to call out first because again, quite often they are missed when people are putting deals together or talking to customers that the support bit is kind of an afterthought uh, once we've done that. So again, that's that's all the playing cards laid out. The idea is that you can um, just play with these playing cards yourselves, get familiar with which products or which things fall in which category. Um, the only other thing I'm going to say is, um, obviously, 
all of our products and services are a moving target. One of the things that's happened since I built this deck is the modernized data center, this part here, and the integrated public clouds have kind of been merged into one and the same. So we, we, we kind of see that whether it's a data center or a cloud provider, it still runs the same technology, it still runs the same software components, and there's been a trend lately at VMware to now think of those two things as just two different types of the same thing. The only difference really between your data center and a public cloud is somebody else is paying for the building and the power and the cooling and the hardware, but the service that you deliver, the experience, the capability is exactly the same. So that's one small change since I built the card and the decks. The only other thing I will say is VMworld is fast approaching and generally we have a whole raft of announcements and new products and services and features. So again, listen out for anything new that may come along uh, since VMworld. So some of this is likely to change, but as a new starter or somebody who's new to the company, this is generally a, a good place to start or a good basis. And what you'll find is, is over time working at VMware, the small subtleties and small differences and slight exceptions or you know other bits to add in this will, will come over time but this seems to be a reasonable place to start especially if you're on your start training and you're going to be speaking to specialists uh, who want to go into more detail about these products at least if you know what these products do what the cold and where they fit in it might give you a little bit more context when you're having your other training sessions so as i showed you before this is what the cards look when they're laid out um, the account managers I've worked with have got used to just kind of playing with these and it suddenly just becomes second nature which products and services fit in which categories, what does what, what something's called and in some cases it prompts somebody to say I've no idea what that is, I should find out of somebody what that is and what that does. Now the reason for showing you that there is if you practice with these cards what you'll find is when you actually come to some of the more corporate presentations or more high level presentations um, you'll see things like this where we'll talk about digital transformation and business outcomes. If you're familiar with those playing cards, when you see things like this, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to start mapping some of that stuff across. It's not just a bubble in a different colour. You kind of understand which products and services fit in there and why they're in that category and what they do. So again, the, my, my hope is is that you'll find this useful and you'll find it interesting. It's not meant to be a definitive list of every single product and category. There are some things, as I said, with NSX, where you could argue that some products and services actually span multiple categories, you know, that security and networking can be applicable to data centers, clouds and digital workspace, just as they can in any, any other environment. But this is meant to be a simple starter to get you get you kind of up and running with the basic stuff around VMware um, and, and being a new starter at VMware. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for take, getting this far through the video just to listen to some of this stuff. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, corrections, any of those things, my details are at the bottom of that slide. But just to say, enjoy your time at VMware um, and, I, and I hope you find that useful and interesting. So thank you very much.